All right, another amazing writing lesson from Mr. Lassard. Today we are focusing on introductions and conclusions, something that a lot of people struggle with. They are deceptively difficult to write in a way that uh, that improves our writing. So maybe this will give you some hints as to how to do that. Uh, as always, reminder that these are required notes, so I do expect to be able to see them in your Cornell notes section when I check. So one of the things about introductions and conclusions is that they're really about fine-tuning your writing. You know, they're the thing that you hopefully wait, you 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 wait till the end to write a really strong introduction and a really strong conclusion. It's when you're trying to make your writing as perfect as possible. So that's something to keep in mind when I'm talking about our objectives. And our first objective is to review the function of introductions and conclusions. So just what purpose do they serve? We'll review that. Uh, we will also hopefully understand what makes strong introductions and strong conclusions. So what, what are those elements that really make them pop out as something that's you know worth reading and worth spending time on. And then finally, hopefully you will be able to apply what you've learned about introductions and conclusions to your own writing. You'll be able to you know go and write an essay that will have its own strong introduction and conclusion. A really quick word of warning, um, I'm making this uh, using examples from the paper that we'll write in 10th grade about things fall apart. Um, but the advice you'll find is applicable to anything that you write. You'll just have to bear with me with the, the examples um, if you're using this for a different paper. So we're, we're going to look first at a not-so-great introduction paragraph. And that goes something like this. There is lots of stuff in Ting's Fall Apart by Achebe that shows how Okonkwo, the main character, is struggles to do what he thinks is right. In the book, Okonkwo has his thoughts, but he also has his actions, and he doesn't always do the same thing as he thinks to himself. By looking at Okonkwo's thoughts and actions and how they are different will show how hard life can be for Okonkwo and his thoughts. So, we don't even really need to talk about why this is bad. Like, we can just see that this is bad. And unfortunately, I get a lot of introductions that look like this or make a lot of the same mistakes that are looking like this. And you don't want that to be the case. So let's talk about three of the things that we see going on in here. First of all, I don't want to read this paper. Nobody wants to read this paper. If this is the first thing that I read in this paper, I am going to, you know, want to walk away and find a snack or eat a chocolate bar, you know, whatever, walk the dog. That That's what I would rather be doing. Um, second of all, there's not adequate background to understand the topic. I read this and if I don't know if I don't already know what this book is, if I don't know who this author is, um, if I don't know who the characters are, I have no idea what is being talked about in this paragraph. So not only do I not want to read it, but I don't get it. And then third, there's just tons and tons of sloppy mistakes, right? Like just, I mean, even if you haven't read the book, you can look in here and you can say, I know that it's not things fall apart. It's probably things fall apart, right? Like that's just a sloppy mistake. And you can look through this paragraph and you can see where sentences don't make sense because a word has been added or a word is, has been left out. And, you know, obviously the person who wrote this did not look over it a second time before they turned it in. So let's look at the same introduction from the last slide, but this time let's look at it rewritten uh, with the three mistakes that I pointed out. All right. It says... Think about a time that you have struggled between what you want to do and what you must do. Maybe you wanted to sleep in, but you knew you had to, had to be on time for that first period test. Or maybe you wanted to hit your brother for getting on your nerves, but instead you took a deep breath and walked away. We all struggle personally with our inner desires and living up to the expectations of the outside world. And Chinua Achebe embodies this struggle and things fall apart. As Okonkwo comes to terms with the man he wants to be and the man he wants others to believe he is, by observing Okonkwo's many struggles with his private self and the man others see, readers begin to grasp the immense difficulty by ultimate, but ultimate necessity of reconciling one's own ideals with the expectations of the world, lest we risk our own destruction. Now, I think we can agree, without even talking about this paragraph, that it's a better paragraph than the one that we saw on the previous slide, but let's talk about why it's a better paragraph. 
So first of all, I want to read this paper. I mean, maybe I should rephrase that and say, I don't mind reading this paper. Like I can tell that time has been put into this. I, there, there's something dragging me into this paper, right? Like there's a connection to me. It says, think about a time that you have struggled. Oh, I have struggled just like this character Okonkwo that they're talking about later. Okonkwo struggled with the same thing that I've struggled with. So that's something that makes that, that leads the reader to not mind reading it. Second, it gives me a solid foundation for the topic, right? All the hook gets me thinking about what the topic is. The topic is then introduced. We know the title of the book. We know the, the author. We know the character. We know what everybody's struggling with, and we know, um, we know why we're talking about the struggle, the struggle between who we are and who we want others to think we are who we want others to think we are, right? That's that's our topic, but we know why it's an important topic to the book before we even get into the weeds. And third, it's technically perfect. Like there aren't, um, well, I should always say maybe there is a mistake that I've missed, but I don't see any mistakes. So it's got good vocabulary, it uses its punctuation well, um, and there's nothing, um, there's nothing that pops out to me as being a problem. And so, the, the big reason that that's, a, that's an issue is because you don't want the reader to start reading this and say, oh, this person has no idea what they're talking about. They don't even know how to use the language, right? You want to make a good first impression. So with an introduction, the most important thing is that you're setting yourself up for success with a good first impression. If my first impression as the reader is that you have put time and effort into connecting me to this and setting me up and making sure it looks good, then I go into the rest of your paper thinking that that was your goal and that you know you you've taken the time and effort that it takes to to make me uh, to, to to write a good paper. So now we're going to look at a conclusion. So we'll just skip over uh, the body paragraphs for a second, and this would be a conclusion for the same paper that we're dealing with. So same thesis, same all of that. It's just that we haven't spent the time looking at the body paragraphs. And here's one that's not so great. So it says, so in conclusion, we that Okonkwo wants to think something and needs to do something else a lot of time in the book, and that makes him die. We see that other characters in the book who accept themselves don't end up aren't dead like him. At the end of the book, we the readers learns that balancing the thought with actions is important, otherwise we die. That, I mean, do we even need to talk about why that's a bad paragraph? And yet, here's a paragraph, again, that I see a lot of times. It's, it's exacerbating some of the problems that I see in many conclusions. So it may be a little bit blown out of proportion, but I do see conclusions that from time to time look like this, and we don't want them to look like this. So here's three things that it's not doing very well. First of all, I feel relieved when I get to the end. I think this can't be over soon enough. I can't even read this thing smoothly. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm stumbling over words. And by the time I get to that last word, I'm like, thank goodness I am done with this. Let me get rid of it. You know, I feel like I might want to, you know, throw it on the floor or something. And that is not how you want somebody to feel when they finish with your paper. Um, I get the sense also, and you should get the sense from the previous paragraphs that we looked at, that we're just rehashing what's already been said in the paper. They're just repeating what was in the body paragraphs, and that is not the point of the conclusion. Look, I've already read the body paragraphs if this is a whole paper. I don't need you to tell me what I just read literally 30 seconds before, right? I don't, it's a waste of my time. It's a waste of your time to write it. I want to always be learning and reading something new, you know, getting a new perspective on things. And finally, it's just sloppy and it has tons and tons of mistakes in it. And I think you picked up on that in just the way that I was barely able to read this conclusion. So on the next slide, let's take a look at this conclusion rewritten uh, with those mistakes fixed. So here's the fixed conclusion. It says, despite the fact that Okonkwo's conflicts between his inner thoughts and outer actions ultimately destroy him, 
The glimmer of hope it offers readers makes this tragically, tragedy continually relevant. The balance we find in our own lives allows us to preserve where Oconquo, persevere, excuse me, where Oconquo failed. We do get up for that early morning test instead of sleeping in, and we don't hit our siblings whenever we feel like it, because we know the long-term benefits of harmonizing our internal and external conflicts. Characters like Oconquo, while frustratingly flawed, ultimately serve as grave reminders of the responsibilities we must take upon ourselves, and this allows us to flourish where they would have failed. So again, it, it's obviously better than the previous paragraph that we looked at, but let's talk about a couple of the things that this paragraph's doing specifically well. First of all, it wraps it up in a way that leaves the reader empowered or hungry for more, right? It's talking about it's talking about us again. Notice that, you know, the balance we find in our lives allows us to persevere where Oconquo failed. So all of a sudden it's about us. We've learned this thing about Oconquo, but now it's about us. Uh, and that's really important to a reader as they're leaving things. Um, it also ties back to what was in that good introduction, right? It ties back to the ideas that were brought up in the good introduction with the early morning test and hitting the siblings. So it makes the reader make it feel complete, but it also brings them back to the thoughts that they were having at the beginning of the paper, and they start putting putting blocks together in their minds where otherwise they might not have. And then it also tells us that we're better than this paper, right? It allows us to flourish where they, where they, the characters, would have failed, right? We're better than what we've learned in this paper. It makes us feel like we've learned something. We can take something away. We're feeling positive about ourselves. Another thing that it does well is that it doesn't repeat itself. Instead, it's reflecting on what the paper proved. It said, look, I get that you understand that there are inner people and uh, inner uh, personalities and outer personalities. Um, and here's, here's why it's important, right? It's not repeating what it proved about Okonkwo. It's saying, here's what we proved about Okonkwo, and here's why it's important to you, which I talked about a little bit with the last piece of advice, right? But it makes us feel that sense of, I get why I spent time reading this paper. Um, and that's all about not repeating ourselves, right? Because remember, I don't need to read what I've already read. I want to read why what I've read is important to me. And then lastly, um, it's technically perfect again. Um, I don't see any mistakes in this paragraph that stick out to me as awful mistakes, right? Sure, there might be a couple here or there. I don't see them. I'd have to look a little more carefully if I did. Um, but that's good, right? It's technically perfect. You're leaving me with this sense that you have put care, if there was care put into the first paragraph, and now there's care put into this last paragraph, I have been possibly fooled into thinking, but hopefully not. I've been lulled into thinking that you put care in throughout this paper, and it's so important for the reader to think that you that that you cared about what you've turned into them, that you cared enough to make sure that the reader isn't wasting their time reading what you've read or what you've written. Excuse me. So. What you really want to do is leave the reader feeling impressed and positive. They're impressed at the work that you've put in. They're feeling positive about the work that they've put in reading the paper. And it's so important because your graders are human. As much as you don't want to believe it, we are going to read your paper. And as much as we want to put personal feelings aside, if you leave us feeling positive about what you have written, then we are going to feel positive. And the next thing we do is look at the rubric and grade it, right? So if you want us to feel good about what we're grading on the rubric, leave us with that positive last impression. And that, my friends, is my last piece of advice for you for the day.